So today we're going to be talking about some recent news with React. Um, so in the past, the React library has had some licensing issues. We're going to talk a little bit about why that is, and now that they're gone, what it means for the industry as a whole. So about two, three days ago, the... Um, the people in charge of the Facebook license decided, you know what, we're gonna, let's just open it up again. We're getting too much backlash about the licensing. And go back in history a little bit. Uh, most open source softwares have uh, what's referred to as an MIT license. What that basically means is it's a very basic license that says, hey, you can take our software, you can use it, it's open source. Hell, you could, if you really even wanted to, you could resell it, right? You can use it in your application, build something with it and then sell that application, right? And what Facebook Facebook did uh, a while back was they said, you know what? We don't really like the wording of that license and it doesn't really protect us as much as we can. As Facebook, we're a giant corporation and that paints a giant target. You know, that's where the money is and so that's who's going to get sued, right? They use their open source library even though it says, you know, use it at your own risk. They didn't like the wording of it basically and they wanted... They wanted something a bit stronger, so they came up with their own license that basically said that if you sue us, then you can't use our open source software. That's basically the gist of it. Um, it's a lot, you know, it's legal stuff. It's a lot more complex. But what what ended up happening is people really started worrying about the licensing issue with React. And although a lot of React projects definitely kept going, and although a lot of React projects still exist, it did have an effect where it wasn't a concern for Angular, for instance. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, one, it's one, it's no longer the case. Uh, Facebook uh, released with about three or four other uh, frameworks that they've they've worked on, that lesser known ones. Um, that uh, that hey, uh, we're back to MIT, right? We're re we re we're re throwing them all back into MIT, and the React community uh, rejoiced. I think. Uh, no, uh, everyone's really happy about that. But what sort of impact do you think it had? And well, for one, I can tell you that it makes. So when starting a new project, you have to think about it as a business, right? As a corporation, and and corporations largely are very timid. And what I mean by that is. When you have one or the other, right? And they're not identical, right? React's very different than Angular. Angular is very different from React, and they both have strengths and weaknesses. But at the end of the day, you could build something in React, and you could build something very similar in Angular, and vice versa. So when you have this option for corporations, and they say, look, we typically want to err on the side of caution. Caution being that this license is a little bit more aggressive than we feel comfortable with. Meanwhile, this, this tool that we can use over here doesn't have that issue. And for a while, um, you know, that would affect a couple people and people is a major concern, right? It's just on their mind that this license may be an issue. And the trend of React has been going up steadily, but maybe not as much. And part of that, part of that upward growth for React developers and um, React's projects is that for the transition between Angular JS to Angular uh, was not a smooth one, uh, to say the least, right? It's not backwards compatible. It, it had its own much more serious drama going on. And, you know, you had all these developers in Angular that were investing time in Angular, Angular JS, investing time and energy to build, to learn this framework really well. And then to find out it's not backwards compatible, pissed off a lot of developers. It also, from that same business standpoint of people saying, hey, you know, because as a company, we're timid. That's that's the sort of thing is most of the time we want to err on the side of caution. Does it really make sense to jump into something that's in beta and still having the kinks worked out? And do we want to start an Angular JS project knowing that in the near future, near future being a year or two, it's not it's going to be considered legacy and there's going to be bigger and better things out there? And the answer is no. And for a while, React was climbing, 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 and it still did. But the concern became, you know, time has passed. Angular has made up for some of that gap 
that uh, React jobs were like up 150% in like three years, which was pretty crazy. And now the part of the Angular catch-up was, okay, well, that time has passed. People have started adopting Angular now that it's stable and there's multiple versions and there's more documentation out there. There's courses out there. It's a lot more well understood by the developer community. And then React comes in and everyone's loving it. But Angular's finally hitting its stride. And then the, the, the licensing thing happens and people start, it starts being a concern. And uh, it's, I don't know that it was necessarily justified. I could just say that from a, a business standpoint, you're going to err on the side of caution. But now, 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 that is no longer the case. The MIT license is here. React developers don't have to worry about that, as well as future projects that when considering how to architect and what tools and frameworks and libraries to use, it's not going to uh, dissuade individuals to use them or to not use them. And so now we're back on an even playing field. So you kind of have the less legal aspects of, do we need to consider this from a legal standpoint? And now you're back to the, the aspect of which tool actually in its functionality works best for what we're trying to accomplish. It is a large infrastructure heavy, massive architecture of Angular or is React, which is a, a view library, and you know it gets more and more complex as you start using additional uh, modules and plugins and libraries that feed into it, like Redux and so on and so forth. Is this something that we're going to use? And we don't have to consider: Are we going to be, you know, out of luck if we if this license issue bites us in the ass? Not anymore. So that that's a consideration that changed. It's really exciting, right? Because no one. No one wants to. My girlfriend's excited about something. Uh, nobody wants to. Uh, wants to. Uh, <laughs> wants to um, have to worry about a licensing issue. We want to say, look, let's take the technologies, let's apply them to our specific scenario, weigh the pros and the cons, and see what is the best decision. And. In, in Facebook's case, what I think happened was that somebody from legal, and I'm sure they get sued all the time, when, you ha when you're where the money is, right? There's a reason that like when, when someone at your work does something they shouldn't do, usually that person gets fired, but they don't sue that person. They sue the company, right? Because that's where the money's at. And they say, oh, it's on the company to keep it. And I, it probably is, but there's a reason they sue the company. Same thing happens with Facebook. Facebook's a big target. And they say, look, we just want to be more protected. They probably get... They have a lot. They have a they have a legal department. I'm sure of many many people, and handling frivolous lawsuits all the time. And they just want to be better protected. And in this case, I think they 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 let the legal side impact the development side of the business. And I don't even know that it was a bad decision. I think it was a, probably a very logical decision, but. If you want people to use your framework for how great it is or your library for how great it is, they're going to have to take that aspect out. And I'm glad they did. Um, this has been... Um, and this, uh, and if, you, if you read up on it, that they say that's the reason why they wanted to change the license uh, the first time to something that was more protected because they were getting so many frivolous lawsuits and this basically protected them and made their life easier so they didn't have to worry about getting sued and spending time, money, and energy to handle these lawsuits. So I understand. Um, I hope they don't end up getting sued more because of it because then they might switch it back, right? They might <laughs> they might say, damn, man, how many lawsuits were we actually saving uh, having this old license? Um, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they would have ever changed it if they weren't going to stick with MIT. But it is something to think about, right? Maybe they have a good point of, we were really protecting ourselves, so maybe we cut our lawsuits in, re in regards to React by half by just switching the license and giving us more legal protection. I, I really hope that's not the case, but um, then, then having MIT. I, uh, I use a lot of open source software at, at my previous work and, and side projects. I'm glad to see that they're, they're adopting a, a more loose license for MIT. And developers can now just weigh the pros and the cons of the framework and the libraries to against one another instead of having to worry about legal aspects because that's no fun. That's too real world. Uh, so um, 
that, that's my two cents on the, the MIT license issue. Glad to see that it's solved, or MIT license, and I'm glad to see that the previous license is, they gave that the old boom, get out of here. Um, so uh, I, I, I would suspect that you would see a slight increase of React jobs because of it, right? Uh, more more people willing to architect projects out in that that maybe were leaning towards Angular because they they didn't want to deal with the licensing issues because it you know most people tend to err on the side of caution. So uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, sus subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, and join the Facebook group. I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the comments below, let me know Angular or React. Bye. <laughs> Quick shout out to deviceplus.com. If you're interested in the latest IOTs, hacks, do-it-yourself projects revolving around Arduino and Raspberry Pi, they have some great how-to guides. I, I highly encourage you to check them out, and thanks for watching.